Nikola Tesla and the Philippovs. Part 3. Naturally, the twain pictures would become the centerpiece. S. N. Elec Clemens, as he signed his letters to Tesla, came to the laboratory on March 4, 1894, and again on April 26. Twain wrote to postpone the initial meeting for one day, and Tesla and Jantz exchanged notes about it. Curiously, Twain's private log for this period makes no reference to the occasion. He had dined with Stanford White at his Madison Square Garden Tower in January and, the following month, had received a notice that $160,000 in royalties were coming his way because of the page typesetting machine which he had backed. But that was all he jotted down. Even though Twain had been aware of Tesla from the very first moment, the thigh inventor had gone public with his creation of the AC polyphase system. Back in November 1888, Twain had written, I have just seen the drawings and description of an electrical machine lately patented by a Mr. Tesla and sold to the Westinghouse Company, which will revolutionize the whole electric business of the world. It is the most valuable patent since the telephone. Twain had run into Tesla on occasion at the Players Club or Delmonica's or at the artist Robert Reed's studio. One night, in Twain's words, the worldwide illustrious electrician had joined the Reed party. Jokes and stories were swapped and songs were sung, particularly Kipling's On the Road to Mandalay. Tesla related the story of how Twain's book saved his life when he was a boy of 12 struck down with a case of malaria, and this tale served to endear Tesla to Twain to the point of bringing tears to the writer's eyes. Interested in inventions and their exploitation, Twain asked Tesla at the lab IFIT would be all right if could sell high-frequency electrotherapy machines to rich widows in Europe upon his next sojourn. The inventor naturally agreed. Tesla, in turn, showed the great writer yet another creation which he claimed would help these widows digest their meals. This contraption, he explained, consists of a platform supported on elastic cushions that are made to oscillate by means of compressed air. One day, he stepped on the platform and the vibrations imparted were transmitted. Tip to my body evidently, these isochronous rapid oscillations stimulated powerfully the peristaltic movements which propel the foodstuffs through the alimentary channels. You mean... It'll make me regular, Twain inquired. Precisely, and without the use of elixirs, specific remedies, or internal applications, whatever. Without further ado, Twain stepped aboard as Tesla tried to stop his assistants from chuckling. As Twain had been so enthusiastic, Tesla neglected to inform him that peristaltic action is induced almost immediately. Suddenly, Twain felt an unspeakable and pressing necessity, which had to be promptly satisfied. Tesla told the Johnsons the next day to their tearful plea, for he had towed him of the platform and find his way swiftly to the lavatory. I think I'll start with the electrotherapy machines, Twain said upon his return. Wouldn't want the widows to get to healthy all at one shot. The photos of Twain and the others were processed nearly one full year before they would appear in print. Tesla was elated and commented to Johnson that the one of Joseph Jefferson was simply immense. I mean, the insuring him alone in the darkness. I think it is a work of art. Catherine suggested that they all celebrate at Delmonica's and that he then join them for a summer holiday at the Hamptons. Tesla wrote back, I first had if I'd part very often from my simple habits, I shall come to grief. However, realizing that he would soon be missing the pleasure of your company, he reluctantly agreed to go to dinner, but not to the holiday, and therefore signed off in the anticipation of the joy of dining with friends and subsequent sorrows. I am aim. Yours sincerely, in Tesla. Concerning the photographs, which were the first ever taken with phosphorescent lights, Tesla, who had his eye on potential investors, became impatient for the publicity, but Martin and Johnson were aghast. I think that we ought to have a little talk about giving to the daily newspapers a hint that Mr. Tesla has succeeded in taking photos by phosphorescence. Martin warned, it will leak out some hour and then someone, with the customary arrogance, will place it in the papers we need to get our priorities established. I think R.Q. Johnson feels the same way. This became the beginning of a series of disagreements between the inventor and his editor. The inventions, researches and writings of Nikola Tesla was now in press, and Martin and Tesla were making money from the sale of the book. However, Tesla kept wanting to give copies away freely. He sent the text to each of his uncles and his three sisters in Bosnia or Croatia, and also mailed his article on Smy to his uncle Pajo and his sister Marika. Martin had to tread carefully, for although he was unhappy with Tesla's lack of concern for the financial side of the situation, 
he also in no way wanted to alienate himself from the wellspring. Martin wrote, Your request for more free copies is just too hard. It seems to me that Thepid's book boys, if they love you, ought to be willing to blow a little money of their own on the book. But you are the discharge of relations to them. Martin promised to send Tesla a dozen copies at reduced prices. Perhaps, Martin requested, you would like to make us a bid on the whole edition, closing as follows. When you write me, make it autographic as often as you can. People are beginning to deplete my stock. From Tesla's point of view, it was his book, and Martin should simply do as he asked. This would become a sore point, especially because Martin would come to lend Tesla money based on profits that were due him as editor and Tesla would never repay him. Martin would overlook it. For no. After the first photographs arrived, including the discreetly stylized engraving of Tesla based on his most recent portrait, Martin requested a sneak preview. I will lock them up or put them in a safe deposit vault, if you wish, until the hour of publication, promised Martin. But I am to get one of the first as an historical souvenir. At the same time, Martin informed Johnson that the University of Nebraska had offered Tesla an honorary doctorate in celebration of their 25th anniversary. I haveaged him to accept. I and you and Mrs. Johnson to bring your influence on him also. Her spell is now a potent one, I fancy. With him, so far as any woman's can be, next to his sister's. It is unlikely, however, that Tesla thought much about getting a doctorate from the obscure University of Nebraska. To a person of his background and education, the offer was virtually meaningless. Johnson thought it more appropriate for a prestigious institution, such as Columbia College, to grant such an honor. Tesla had just received the Elliott Crescent Gold Medal Award from the Franklin Institute for his earnest and indefatigable work as a pioneer in this field, and on account of the great value to science of his researches. However, this was not the same as a doctorate, and so Johnson wrote to Hugh Fairfield Osborne, one of the dignitaries at Columbia, urging that they make the offer instead. Johnson wrote, There would be a particular appropriateness in Columbia giving him a degree, since his first lecture was, if a mistake not, delivered at the college, and since New York City is the scene of his most important discoveries. I think it may truly be said that there are few men occupying this unique position in both the theoretical and practical phases of scientific work as to his general culture. I may say that he is widely read in the best literature of Italy, Germany and France as well as much of the Slavic countries to say nothing of Greek and Latin. He is particularly fond of poetry and is always quoting Lopardi or Goethe or the Hungarians or Russians. You know a few men of such diversity of general culture or such accuracy of knowledge. End of Nikola Tesla and the Philippovs. Part 3. Thank you for watching.